Hey there! I thought it would be helpful to create a video for you to just walk you through everything that comes with this course and toolkit. I know that sometimes when you start a new course it can be a little bit disorienting with all the different things included so I'm going to walk you through all of the great templates and tools that you get along with the course. You can understand better what you have and how to use it so you can start planning those awesome research projects. So let's get into it. So this is the Teachable platform. This is obviously the course lessons that you'll see here. Um, these do say draft, but that won't say draft for you when you get into it. So um, these are all video lessons. Let me show you in Teachable real quick what each module contains, at least at the time of this filming. So right now we're in the Start Here module and we're going through the course walkthrough here. So um, that's a great place to start. Next, we have the toolbox. Now I'm going to skip that for a moment and get right back to it shortly. Now these two modules, how to plan a UX research project and elements of a UX research plan are the meat of the course. Now in introduction to UX research plans, as you can see here, I have some bulleted items at the top. So I've added these to most lessons so you can get a better idea of exactly what you can expect to learn in each lesson. Sometimes they're really simple and I don't have them there, but I think most of them have them. So in this particular lesson, we're going to go over what a UX research plan is and why it's important, the anatomy of a UX research plan, and how a UX research plan should be used. Definitely an important place to start. While we're here, I just want to point out to you that all of the videos have closed captioning or subtitles. So there's a little instruction note there. So if you come in and you... I'm going to turn the volume down before I start it. If you start the video, and then if you go to closed caption and go to English, that's the only language I have right now, um, it, can, it will show the closed captioning. So whatever reason you want to use that, that's great. Um, they're not perfect, they are a machine transcription, but they're like 95% there, I think. So just to let you know. The next lesson here is super important, and I recommend you watch this before you jump into starting to write your plan, because in this lesson I go over in detail my recommended process and exact steps for creating your plan. So you'll learn what meetings you should have, how to get what you need from stakeholders and clients, communication and collaboration and other tips for creating and managing your research plan. Okay. Now the next lessons here in elements of a UX research plan go through each section of the plan. So what you can do is use this as you're drafting your plan to work on each section using the research plan template provided with this course. So these sections match up with that template. Okay, so speaking of that, let's go back to the toolbox. The toolbox has three sections right now. The first is files and templates, so I wanted to put everything in one place. So even though I may drop a couple of things into these sections here just as a duplicate, um, this is where you can go to find everything that's included in terms of the files and templates. Okay. So let's go in there and I'll walk you through them. So the first and most important one is the UX research plan template and guide. I'm going to click on that. Now, I say it's the most important template in the course because your plan is what you are working towards as the output of this course, right? So I'm going to walk through it really quickly. Now you'll see that it also says it has the 25 plus research goal prompts and those were promised to you when you bought the course and those are actually right in the plan. So this is the template as well as those goal prompts. Now in this template and also in some of the other ones, I do reiterate some information that is in the lessons, um, but pretty much everything's covered in the lessons so you can um, read this just to reinforce some of that or if for some reason you didn't listen to the lesson, <laughs> this will be helpful to you. So I kind of have some information like that there. Then we go through the plan. We have the background, stakeholders. And as you can see, there's some information on each one and some instructions. Again, this is a template as well as a guide, right? 
So it has that information as well as some examples. So again, here's your research goals. Here are those goal starters. Here's some examples. I go through all of this during the lessons, but um, just so you can see all those goal starters here, down to methodology, more examples, participants, logistics, reporting, bunch of information about timeline here. So um, with these timelines, I want to let you know that you have two options and all of this is explained a lot in a lot more detail in the timeline section of the course. But I want to let you know you can use the table embedded here. There's a table that's embedded here in the Google Doc to create your timeline. So you can just type right in here, whatever you want. Or you can use a special dynamic timeline Google Sheet that basically takes the durations and dependencies and other information to create the dates for you. So let me go back and I'll show that to you. So that's accessible here, the dynamic project timeline. So I'm going to open that up. It has full instructions here. And um, I also have a video walking you through in more detail how to use this again in the timeline lesson, but just so you know, this is here. And you'd basically use the duration, which is the days here, and dependent tasks to create your timeline. All right, so that if you adjust something, like if you adjust a dependent task or adjust the days here, then it would update the rest of the entire um, timeline for you, as opposed to doing it in the Google Doc where everything's manual. So I wanted to give you a couple of options there. Um, you can also even customize your owners, which would update those drop downs there, your statuses, and even add holidays, which is awesome to skip any days, depending on where you are, what your company does, what your country celebrates. Um, you can put holidays in here. So your plan will automatically skip those. So anyway, I just wanted to make you aware of that. So back in the template, that's what this is linked to. So it, um, actually links up here and can be refreshed so that it always pulls in that information for you. So I wanted to make you aware of that. And then we have additional items, that kind of stuff. So that's your UX research planning guide, which you can take advantage of. Um, next, in addition to those, you have the stakeholder interview questions here. So these are for you to use to gather information from stakeholders, team members, and clients to inform all the parts of your plan. So this is the way it's organized right now. I have a little bit more work to do to add um, to this, but be aware that these are here. So definitely take advantage of these to use them as you're collaborating with stakeholders and clients to inform your plan. You also have a participant characteristics list. So let's check that out which I recommend you go through when you're writing up the participant area of your plan. There are a lot of ideas in here that sometimes people don't think about in terms of characteristics of different people you'd want for your research study. So it can really help you make sure you include what you need to get the right research participants. So all kinds of things, demographics, location, and you can kind of customize these obviously to your needs, okay? Those are the core templates and tools that you would use to create your plan, okay? Now I have some other things you can use as well. I have a research prioritization scorecard you can check out. So this is meant to help you take a step back, outline what the research is about, why you want to do it, how it will impact your organization, and basically score it to help you figure out what, what research projects you should be focusing on. This is a great activity to do as a team because it helps you really discuss all of these things that are so important. You can customize all of these parameters here, like importance to users, business impact, customer support issues, and all of that. And I have a video in this same lesson below here that will walk you through exactly how to use this. Okay, so at the end, you end up getting a numerical score as well as a visual score, which is great. Okay, and this also, if you go back to this first tab here, actually works with 
the workbook that I have in this same lesson as well, if you choose to use that. But again, watch the video if you're interested in using this for exactly how to use it. And then finally, I have this UX Research Kickstart workbook, which is right here, which you can actually go through right here and download if you want. Um, so this is great for beginners because it will take you step by step through understanding what's possible with your UX research and help you figure out those five W's of why, what, when, where, and with whom you want to do your UX research. And as I mentioned, it, this worksheet at the end, once you work on this, actually coordinates with that prioritization scorecard um, to help you keep track of if you have a lot of different research ideas, you can kind of pull them all together here. This kind of coordinates with that and see all of them and then go ahead and even score them on the other page. So it kind of all works together that way. Okay, so yeah. Those are all the files and templates in the system here. So let me just go back again um, and show you. We also have live Q&A, which I will be doing twice per month. So this is where you can always get the latest information on that here, when the next one's going to be. Um, and this will also have the previous recordings from previous sessions. So I definitely recommend you take advantage of that so you can get that extra help, meet other people who are doing the course, and I may also have some free pop-up trainings and guests there as well. So you should check those out, and those will be twice per month. And then finally, if you want additional help, you can access private coaching. This does not have to be just for your plan. You can use it to help with your moderator's guide, um, help deciding when to do research, what method to use. I can even help you, um, coach you with um, doing facilitating research sessions. So all the information on that is here and you do get a 20% discount as a student. So this information will be kept up to date in terms of how to schedule that. And there's a little bit of information about me here. If you wanna contact me about anything, please feel free to use my email address here and I'd be happy to get back to you as well. So again, thank you so much. I hope this was helpful in getting you situated with everything that you have access to and I hope you're excited to dive in and start using everything. I'll talk to you soon.